Hello fish friends, I'm Chris from Discount Aquarium Fish and Reef and today we're going to talk about plugging holes in an aquarium. First why you might want to do that. You may have an aquarium that's been drilled for a closed loop filter system, has holes in the bottom of that tank, or you may be considering purchasing a used tank that has holes in the bottom and you don't want them, you're going to use uh, hang on filters or canisters with tubes over the back. We're going to talk about how you can plug those holes or patch them and also how you may want to consider using one of those holes for an easy water change system or how you might want to plug those holes in such a way that you can easily use them later should you decide to install a closed loop filter system which we'll cover in another video. It's always best to leave your, your options open, which is why the first method I don't really prefer, but we'll cover that very quickly. One way is to cut a piece of glass, a square piece of glass. The only reason I've drawn this circle in the middle here is you're going to be putting that piece of glass down over that hole in the tank. So you won't need to put silicone in the middle because there's a hole there. You're going to take some good quality aquarium silicone. Um, we sell this ASI sil silicone, which is good. You can actually use clear silicone from the hardware store, and that will work as well for you. Um, when you do this, you're gonna wanna apply a good amount of silicone all the way around the outside of this hole. You're going to put it into the bottom over that hole. Take your palm, put good pressure on it so that all that silicone will coat the entire underneath side of that glass. That way you have a great seal. Then you're also, for added precaution, you're going to take the silicone and you're gonna caulk around the edge, take your finger to rub it smooth. That way you're covered both directions. Some people even go underneath the tank after and put silicone around here, really not necessary because you've got a, a full silicone bond on that piece of glass. The only advantage to doing the glass method is then you can move that tank around a little easier without having bulkheads installed. Uh, if bulkheads are installed when you move a tank, you're going to either need to flip that tank over upside down, or you're gonna to need to use a spacer, uh, usually a four by four or something like that to set the tank on. You never wanna set it on the bulkheads because any jarring uh, can crack the bottom of the tank. We've seen that done. Unfortunately, more often than I care to count. Now, if you're wanting to plug these holes, but you want to leave your options open in the future, you're going to use what's called a bulkhead. Bulkheads have a nut on the bottom, then they have a gasket. When you install a bulkhead, the gasket goes on the bottom, uh, on the water side, and then you're going to screw the nut up underneath Go hand tight, one quarter more with the channel lock. Don't worry if you didn't tighten it enough, you'll see a drip coming. You can always take a channel lock and tighten that bulkhead a little bit more. One tip there also with regard to your stand, we have tanks that we're taking down where they drilled small holes in the stand where the bulkheads are. It makes it really hard to get in there and do some unplumbing without taking the tank off the stand. Go ahead and drill some pilot holes use a jigsaw, cut a nice six inch by six inch square hole there, makes it much easier to work on your bulkheads. Now, if you want this to be able to be easily used later, rather than plugging these holes, gluing it all up, so you basically waste the bulkheads and, and uh, can't easily convert over to using them for some kind of system, you're gonna want a plug to go in the top. Uh, that plug, you want a slip-in plug. That way you can just slip it in. You'll use a bulkhead that is slip on the top. You can just slip that plug in the top because on the bottom, you're gonna install a riser. These come in all kinds of different lengths. Uh, you'll have a thread bulkhead on the bottom, so you can install that riser. And then you're gonna want to install, I'll explain what this uh, apparatus is for in a minute. You're gonna wanna install a one-inch valve thread thread onto the bottom of your riser. That way you can cut off that valve, but if you want to use it later, you can move the substrate away, 
pull your slip in plug out. You might have to use, uh, if it's been in there for a while, little cat locks, a pinch on it, pull it out. Then you can install whatever return plumbing or strainers that you want on the top. And you've already got your valve on the bottom. You can install a hose bar fitting and you'll be ready to plumb whatever plumbing underneath that you want to plumb. A couple things to know about plumbing. Bulkheads do not require silicone. They have a complete seal with their gasket. You don't need to add silicone when you put in bulkheads. Anything that is threaded, you're going to get silicone again. You're gonna put a nice bead of silicone around those threads, and then you're gonna thread it in. This is the proper way to do it. You can fill the tank right away. We do this when we're plumbing tanks out in the field. Um, it's basically making a gasket hold and the water is not going uh, to be able to enter that area. So keep that in mind with any threaded fittings. You don't want to use Teflon tape. Teflon tape takes more skill. If you wrap too many wraps, you can crack a fitting trying to screw it on. If you don't wrap enough wraps, you can have a leak. It's just not worth the hassle. When you put the silicone on, it also works as a thread lubricant. Real easy to thread your, your fittings all the way in together and they're not going to leak for you. Now, let's say this tank has generally going to have one to four holes in it, most likely four because someone's been using a closed loop. They've taken two of them down, teed them off, taken the other two down, teed them off. They have returns going up through generally the two on the outside. They have drains going down through the two on the inside and either a pump underneath for just adding water flow and motion to the tank, or they've got a big ocean clear canister filter uh, running an under tank uh, filter system, which again, we'll cover in another video, but that is definitely something to consider. Now, when I'm plumbing them and somebody wants them closed off, I always talk to them about if they want an easy way to do water changes. The way that you're gonna do that is you're going to use one of those bulkhead holes you're gonna put a bulkhead in that hole. On the underside, it's going to be the same as if you were just putting valves on and plugging that bulkhead. So you'll have a riser. If you like your valve to be down lower, you use a longer riser. They come all the way up to like eight inches. Uh, if you'd like that valve hanging down lower underneath the stand. And uh, again, when you plumb, you just screw in a bar fitting. So you would use a thread thread one inch valve you'll use a thread slip, slip on the top, thread on the bottom, bulkhead. Bulkheads come in all different types. They come thread, thread, meaning both sides are threaded. They come slip, slip, meaning both sides are thread, slip. And they come slip on the bottom, thread on the top, and slip on the top, thread on the bottom. So you've got all those different combinations for different plumbing applications. In this application, the way I'm showing it to you right now is the way it would normally be sitting inside your tank. I would usually cut this piece of PVC shorter. I would glue it into the bulkhead. And the reason for that is you're gonna put a coupler on there and you're gonna want to be able to take that coupler and actually pull the coupler off. Or if you're just pulling a strainer off, um, you're going to want this to stay intact. You're not want, wanting to pull that out because then your substrate and whatnot is going to get into that bulkhead, which we don't want. So this strainer would just be on in order to keep anything from getting into the tip and into this tube here, fish, whatever. Uh, but for your water changes, you're going to cut a piece of PVC that comes up inside the tank to the height at which you want to do your water change. So if you're wanting to change one third of the water, you'll measure and you'll have this pipe come up to where it comes two thirds up the way in the tank. And then you can just hook a big tube onto the bottom here. You take this tube out, or if you're going up to the strainer here, which I would recommend, you don't want to pull the tube out because of the gravel. You're gonna insert that tube in the top here. You've already measured how long it would need to be to be at your water change level. And you'll slip a strainer back on the top to keep fish from going down during your water change. That way you can open this valve. You can walk away, do whatever you want because 
it's going to stop letting water out when it gets down to the position of how many gallon water change you want to do. If you do different size water changes, just make yourself a few different size insert tubes. Uh, that way you can insert them in and do your water change that way. I hope this was helpful as far as uh, sealing up holes, some options that you have there. Uh, again, I like to keep all my options open, so when I plug them, I like to put a valve on the bottom, a slip-in plug um, that I can easily remove later if I want to and do any kind of filter plumbing underneath. As far as buying your parts go, you can of course get valves and PVC, and you can even get bar fittings at the hardware store, you can get risers at the hardware store. The things that you'll probably need from an aquarium store are your strainer, they come in all different types, um, and you're going to want your bulkheads. They're very hard to find locally, maybe, maybe expensive, uh, better to buy from an aquarium store than go online, keep your money local, and that way you'll have all the, the tools that you need. If you ever have any aquarium questions or want us to cover a particular topic on video, you can search our name, Discount Aquarium Fish and Reef on Google. You'll come up with our Instagram account, our Facebook account, our website. Uh, you can call us on the phone. You'll see our phone number there and our email, tinkfan72 at cox.net. Any of those five ways you can contact us. We'll be happy to answer any question. Uh, we'll be happy to cover any topic that you'd like a more in-depth video made of. And we're always there to help out the hobbyist. Thanks for viewing.